then I had to and then I had to work it out with my husband. Don't think that that was easy in any way shape or form. This this has <laughs> caused not problems in our relationship, but like I mean we had so many questions and we're both being individuals had to work through things on our own, you know what I mean? Not everything was black and white of yes I agree and no I don't. There was a lot of stuff. I mean, this has been months and years in the making kind of type thing to get to where we are now. It's not an easy task. But it's not something that you can ignore. And I don't understand how people can just go, oh, well, now that I know it, eh, I can go back to whatever because it doesn't matter because it's just all too consuming or whatever the case may be. You can't. That's the that. problem. Once this awakens in you, it's a, it's a, it's a never-ending quest. You're, uh, you, you're actually, you, you almost can't stop. A couple people online have referred to it as a mind virus. I got told in class on Tuesday. Um, it's well. It's obviously not a virus because it's not destructive. So it's definitely. Uh, that's why I love that movie Inception. There. Yeah. That's literally what it is. Once that seed takes place, it's game over. You can never go back to being what you were ever. No. Yeah. You know, there's those I, I days. Think, I, go ahead. I think they call that. I think they call that a meme. Yeah, I like that. Well, if you, you know, you the thing up, is, if you look up the term meme. It is a thought that is actually. That acts as a virus in the brain. They they know that they know they know the neurolinguistics and they know the effect of a meme, and that's why they keep repeating things over and over and over. That's why, like, it, if you're watching the the situation that was going on in Great Britain or in London, and how they would show the five uh, little clips over and over and over and over again, because they were programming the people to to have a meme and turn it into their mind, it, it, along with the neurolinguistics that they're uh, accompanying it. Yep. Well, it's good, because if that's all it takes is for this seed to take hold, and everybody start to, you know, you, like I say, you, you, you're, disfati- you're dissatisfied with life if you ever try to go back to what you were living before, even if you were happy before, and it causes you to have to want to do something with your life, and if uh, the amount of people that have been watching the videos and stuff that's all over the world now, and everyone's getting so friggin' fired up finally, and they want to do something about things now... That's great because that's just going to take off and it's going to be exponential from here on out. And these bulletins and notices that are going out, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't give a shit too. Because you know what? All you got to do is point out what the what uh, Dean did is at Section 32 and 52. They're fucked. They're fucked. They can't do shit because they know they from reading that. You know they have no jurisdiction over you. And if they have to pull you in. The lawyers is gonna have to provide proof of uh, and, uh, proof of uh, payroll. Yeah. That, that shit ain't gonna go. Uh, that shit's not gonna go fly. And it's you know what? It's not complicated. It's very easy. It's two fucking lines in the in our own charter. Yeah. And the police claims that they have to enforce the charter. Okay. Well, enforce it. Leave me the fuck alone. Yep. And uh, if you uh, if you walk into court in a summary convictions, and uh, the last time I got dragged out of my truck and uh, arrested and hauled into jail the next day, or into court the next day, they brought all the paperwork I had with me because I was reading them the Charter and Rights and Freedoms at the side of the highway. It's funny mm-hmm. that, they, that they say that they're enforcing the Highway Traffic Act, but when I show them the Charter and Rights and Freedoms, they don't acknowledge that at all. I said, dude, I said, read 52. This is a superior document. You're trying to enforce a subordinate document that has no force and effect according to this charter. Ah, yeah. fuck, tell it to the judge. So I did tell it to the judge. They hadn't. They brought my paperwork with me while I was in handcuffs, and I pulled it out and I said, excuse me. I said, do you honor and respect the Charter and Rights and Freedoms? And the judge just went, Mr. Clifford, you're this close to being held in contempt of court. He was like, what? I didn't know a question was in contempt. Well, how could bringing up the Charter and Rights and Freedoms be contempt of court if that's a document that you guys are bound by? Yeah. So if, they're, if, they, if they arrest you in contempt of court, then they're in breach of the Charter. And if they breach the Charter, then they have no standing and no authority over you, period. At all. Ever. It just, it just makes the case of how blatantly obvious it all is. When you even try to bring up the Charter and Rights and Freedoms in their own courtroom, they flip out and threaten you. Hey, man, that's cool. You know what? Follow the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in right. the court case. That's there you it. go, right into the court file. It's like, hey, you know, according to this in the file, which you have to acknowledge now, it states that blah, 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 blah. And if they still refuse that, then they're in breach of contract from the Queen. Yep. Oh, and yeah. The has to uphold the administrative process for us. That's true. But they have, been, they have been in breach of trust against the Queen now since 1917, since we went bankrupt. 
Yeah. Or 33, that, I That's say. a whole other can of worms. But that's but another can of worms not even going to get into, yeah. So yeah, so it's, it's pretty fucking nuts. <laughs> but that's how bad it is. When you bring up the Charter and Rights and Freedoms in, in, one, of their, in one of their courtrooms, that, that's what exposes the fraud. We all know that's not what's going on there. There's no human rights being violated because that's not, they're, they're trying to enforce a contract. But then, they yeah. don't, but then they don't produce the contract either, which means yeah. they have nothing. If they do, all you gotta do is A for V that and say, here, return well, it for security. Well, no, if they, if they produced an actual con that's if they produced a charge, the original charging instrument. If they, they, they can't produce a contract that they're enforcing because there isn't one. Well, there can't be one because if they bring forth a char uh, charge, then you can question for constitu uh, constitu constitutionality on their part. And you can also bring up the issue that there's possible violations of human rights from the UN Charter. Yeah, they don't like that one either. Well, who? somebody sent me a link to a video they went and took after watching one of my videos. I think I posted uh, it on my favorites on my channel there, the DCDOTCF. And this lady walked up, it uh, must have been in Ontario, to, to a group of cops or whatever outside of a court building and just said, you know, excuse me, uh, I have a question for you. And they're like, oh, yes, ma'am, you know, blah, blah, whatever. And she said, do you guys, uh, do you guys uh, respect uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? And the guy just looked at her and said, no, and then walked away. Really? And that's in Canada. And the video's on my channel. They, they went out and they, they filmed that after watching my, my videos just to, just to go, oh, okay, well, let's go try this out. And they did. And so sure as shit, you got a cop admitting, no, fuck no, we don't respect the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We don't even re we don't recognize it, is what he said. Do you recognize that document? He said no. Interesting. Ask him if he works for the Canadian government. If he does, say that Canada was a signatory in 1947. Exactly. And if you say that again... I'll, I'll have you removed from your position. Yeah. Well, as far as I'm concerned, she should take that video and uh, go file charges against them. Right there. Yep. Right there. They file charges okay. against us for looking at them the wrong way, don't they? Hey, uh, look, hey, you know, you know what you should do? You should file an intent to harm. You have valid cause. They say they don't give a fuck about human rights. Boom. There's their intent. They don't give a shit about you. So there there's you go. their intent. They established intent. Now they just. They commit the actions. Um, they commit the actions all the time. Now you have an established intent. Yeah, I agree with that. Intent of every is everything. Exactly. Okay, now I have someone in the chat saying the Queen swore on the Bible to uphold the common law. Upon allowing legislature, her oath became null and void. Yeah, I've seen uh, that video several times. There's two different queens: Queen, the actual uh, Queen Elizabeth, and then Her Majesty. Yeah, Her Majesty. Her Majesty is doing the acts, but her Queen is the one that's upholding the Commonwealth and the, um, oh, fuck, what's that word? Defender there? of all faiths, defender of the defender common law. Has, defender of sovereignty and all that shit. Yep. Yeah. Now, that is, that is true, but that's what I mean. That's why there's two different arguments going on here. That's why they're claiming they're not violating your human rights in court, because they're just trying to enforce contract or commerce. Yeah, but still... The, U uh, the Human Declaration of Rights is still a contract binding to whatever government assigned. Exactly. Signed on 1947. So uh, if anyone has a social insurance number, which is most likely the case for any police officer or peace of officer or justice of the peace and so on and so forth, they too must also uphold the human rights. And if, they, if the courts has a problem or if the lawyer tells you to take it up to the judge, you said go right ahead. I'll be putting this as Exhibit A attached with my motion to strike. Yep. That would do it. Boom. So they're going to have to look at Exhibit A because it's in the public record. So if they look at the Human, uh, human Rights uh, Declaration, they're going to say, well, shit, my hands are tied. What the fuck do you want me to do about it? Yep. Now there is a public record of human rights abuses in a, in a country that is a signatory to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's just like what the Nazis said. The reason why they got away with most of it is because no one complained. You, there you also go. make a criminal complaint. File it with the Crown, file it with the court, file it with the AG, Attorney General. So when you get the Attorney General involved, he's going to ha have to do something because if he let that go, he let that slide, he must resign. Well, here, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll do some name dropping right here then because I have sent criminal complaints that were notarized, which is public recognition of it, and in the form of an affidavit, and I have sent that and served it by registered mail on Andrew Swan here in Manitoba, our Attorney General, 
and he has completely ignored everything I sent him. So yeah. the day is coming right away where I'm going to be sending copies of everything that I've got off to the provost marshal in Ottawa, and I'm going to be demanding some arrests and some criminal charges to be filed. Uh, I, I, you know, I really don't want to have to do all this stuff because I'll be putting a bigger target on myself, but these people don't seem to be getting the hint that I want to be left the fuck alone. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to take the battle to them. We all have to take the battle to them because we got to fight for our right to be left alone. It sounds like a like a contradiction in terms, but that's unfortunately the way things go. Yep, I hear you. Yeah, there's but a lot of people out there that are saying that they, they don't want to do anything. They'd just rather not play at all. But in not playing at all, you're not really doing anything. You're not going to... You can't win a defensive fight. Uh, you, the, the, the difference is, is when I say don't play at all, it's like, okay, then just stay home on your, on your property, plant a garden, this and whole nine, you know, trade and get a farmer's market going, that kind of stuff. And I talk about this in video six that I think finally got uploaded this morning, actually, uh, about how that's the ultimate solution to everything is to go what I call super Gandhi on these people. <laughs> and that's just to be sitting in, in your garden at your house and make them have to come right to your home and put a gun to your head and say, you owe property taxes, pay or you're out. Right? Make them the aggressor. Make them the enabler. Make them the people that are obviously the ones coming to you and causing you harm. But let then you better, the know, you better know how to protect yourself. Let the tyrant show its true colors. Viva Vendetta. There you go. Yeah, now let's, let's talk about a little bit more about... What they do best. Let's talk a little bit more about... Uh, property taxes and, and, and law as far as um, as far as all that goes. Because I had somebody, uh, Miller in the, who isn't of any relation to me, but he wants to understand a little bit more about property taxes and, um, oh geez, in bylaws and permits and whatnot. Because okay. he's looking at getting, like he has his own land and he is um, trying to build on it and he's, he's trying to follow this whole free man kind of sovereign idea. And so now he needs to understand a little bit more. Okay, I will say that if you're going to build a house in the middle of nowhere and you want to be able to tie into the power grid, if you don't get a permit and have an inspection on your electrical system, you will not be getting tied into the grid. So if you want to leave this stuff completely, be expecting to, number one, to be, to be living off the grid. But you do have recourse for this because it is your electricity, period. Uh, and I've got a claim against the Manitoba government on this one as well right now. i got so many things going on that I don't even know what to do sometimes when I wake up in the morning. But I made the argument with the province of Manitoba more than a year ago, and they defaulted on this. And I contacted them, uh, sworn affidavit of the whole nine yards, and it was a long document. But the gist of it was the people own the land, not the government. Government just holds things in trust. It's not theirs. They hold it in trust for us. And that means that the land... The resources, the trees, the water, the minerals, everything is ours being held in trust. So if, the, if, if all the resources in the land are ours, and I can prove to you in the Manitoba Hydro Act in Manitoba where I live that the people were the source of the funding for Manitoba Hydro to build all their dams, we, we extended the credit to Manitoba Hydro because they got it from the government, and we are the government. The people is the government. So if that's the case, so if it was my money my resources and everything that was used to generate electricity was mine, doesn't that make the product that's being produced also mine? So the, the electricity being generated by these corporations using our land, our resources, and our credit, it's our property that they're selling to other people and back to us. So yeah. that's, a more, that's a more valid argument than the 96 is your fix. I don't want the government to pay my bills. I don't owe them any goddamn money because they can't sell me something I already own. Or, so you're talking about Hydra and whatnot, just not paying it, and then they shut it off, and then what do you do? Exactly. Well, then you sue them. You take them to court, and you get them to prove the electricity is even theirs in the first place. Yeah. If you, if you, were, if you were to set a precedence like that... If you made it, if you didn't have little red dots showing up on your head when you went home at the end of the night, that would yeah. collapse their entire system. But uh, So back to the permits with the land, so because it, it has relevance there. So anyways, if you want to build a place where you're off the grid and you're living without, uh, without even electricity, which I recommend, do it. Um, you don't need the power grid. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a contractor. I'm a, I'm a house builder. It's simple as has actually. It's it's easier to build a house that's uh, that, that 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 functions better than the ones being built today. But uh, you got to remember when you buy land 
The government is making the argument when they try to charge you property taxes that they are a joint tenant in common with your land. That's